So what languages do you need to know for malware analysis? Um, when I first started out, this was a, a big question because learning a language is, is a lot of time invested. It's a lot, of, a lot of brain power on your part to try to pick up this new thing. Um, given once you learn a language, um, you know, the concepts and things stay the same, but the syntax changes. So going from one language to another is usually fairly simple, but you have to learn the syntax of that new language. Um, so it's kind of like if you know how to speak in your native language in your country, going to another country, at least you know that you know there is grammar and there are, there are nouns and you know things like that. So you know the basic structure. You just need to learn the syntax for the language. <clears throat> Putting those things together is also a little bit different, but at the core of it, when when learning malware analysis and exploit development, like what what core languages do you need to know? Um, and those boil down to three um, for me. And uh, at all the places I've worked and, and through all the malware I've seen and exploit development I've done, um, these are three of the most useful. They will get you the furthest as far as tools that are already developed or you developing your own tools and being compatible with other things. And they are, uh, firstly, Python. So a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions on scripting languages and things and you know some some old schoolers who still prefer Perl and things like that some new people you know prefer Swift or you know any of these other up-and-coming languages um, or combinations of both um, compiled and scripting but Py Python at its core is is a very useful language and it, it's incorporated into so many tools and different APIs and things and there, there's really no reason not to learn it um, even if you're not doing exploit development or, or malware work um, just knowing Python even in a, a, a basic office job being able to use Python for data analysis or parsing data and things like that is very very easy and it can simplify a lot of day-to-day -day tasks that may be repetitive on top of that it is super versatile so you can use it on pretty much any system out there um, and it can interface with you know another system what one thing i use it all the time for is it's a http module so if i need to transfer files from a mips system let's say um, and i'm going to windows or mac or linux i can spin up a python http server to serve files and just w get them or browse to them from another system completely platform independent and get those files very very easy without setting up any kind of sharing or, or FTP or SSH servers or any of that stuff. It's just straight up HTTP, serve the file, close down Python, it's done. And there, there's zero code involved in that. And Python has a ton of modules that allow you to do those types of things. So Python is is an awesome start. Um, it gets you familiar with, with programming languages in general. Um, and you can take that all the way up to um, coding web servers and things. Python is used for a crazy amount of stuff that you may not think a scripting language could be used for. Um, but some of the biggest brands out there have their entire web server backends written in Python, which is crazy. So Python, number one, got to learn it. Um, that or another scripting language. It doesn't have to be Python, but you need a scripting language for this, for this job. And Python is, is the most common one out there. The next is you need some kind of compiled language. Um, there's a lot of debate about this as well. You can, you know, there's tons of lang languages out there. There's new ones like Rust that, you know, are tout a bunch of features and stability and security and things like that. Well, in this line of work, we really don't care about security. Uh, most of the times we're trying to break security. Um, and the, the, the core of all these languages tend to stem back to C um, or C++. Um, but at, it, at its core core, we really want to go back to C. Learning C, C code will help you immensely, not only in exploit development and malware analysis, but just in coding in general, in learning about the structures and processes and things that are happening beneath these higher level languages like Go and Rust and you know um, Java, things like that. You really get to see how memory is allocated, how it's 
how it's used by the system, how it's freed, how it's paged, how memory managers work, how threading works and scheduling, all of these things. C really gets you a up close and personal look at. And being able to write C and disassemble binaries in, back into pseudocode will allow you to see that disassembled binary and decompiled binary and correlate more easily to C code that you're used to reading. If you're used to writing Rust and Java and, and all these different things, you, you may not be used to seeing how, how that memory management is, is structured or how, or how things are allocated or how you know copy operations work and things like that. All you know is the high level order of how to implement the syntax in the code, say Java, to allocate some memory, copy a string, something like that. But you don't know what that's doing underneath the hood and how it's managing all that stuff. C, you have to do all that manually. And it's in that manual learning process that you learn about all these low-level things, which will help you in the next part. So C, C++, that's you know right above assembly, pretty much. Um, C++ is higher than C because it's object-oriented. There's a bunch of other stuff going on. C is, is really the base at what you want to get at. So Python and C, those are the two, two big ones. And then specifically for reverse engineering and malware analysis, what you want to look at is assembly. Um, specifically x86 or x64 assembly, or if you're planning on looking at phones or embedded systems like routers, um, cars, satellites, refrigerators, those are most likely going to be running on some kind of ARM processor. So you need to, at first, pick one or the other. Uh, you know, and really get familiar with it. I, I would highly suggest x86-64 because that's, you know, that's Intel-based. That's what you're going to be looking at primarily out in the world. And then ARM is more of an offshoot of that um, that you may get into a little later. Or you may start off. Who knows? But being being able to write at least a little bit of assembly, you don't have to program in assembly or do anything like that, but understanding assembly language will help you reverse engineer binaries, understand malware and be able, uh, as well as um, shellcode that may be in that malware and allow you to write your own shellcode that can be used for injecting into malware and things to aid you in analysis. So those are the, those are the three main languages um, that you need to be very familiar with. Python or so, some sort of scripting. Preferably C language. You know, get, get as close to the metal as you can and then some flavor of assembly, uh, x86-64. And then from there, in, in reverse engineering and, and malware analysis, may it may sound bad, but you kind of need to, from that basis of Python C and assembly, you're going to be familiar enough with programming that with malware you're going to see all kinds of languages. So if you don't know JavaScript, well, you may get some malware that was written in JavaScript. And now you have to comb through some JavaScript. And it may be a lot of obfuscated, ugly JavaScript that follows no normal coding practices. But you got to be able to be familiar with JavaScript and get up to speed with it and understanding general code practices and apply those to the JavaScript file you're looking at to go ahead and reverse it. The same goes with any languages, that, including like weird offshoots like AutoIT or... Python that's been converted into executables, or VBS scripts that have inline shellcode in them that are doing all sorts of craziness. It can really be any language out there. So having that solid foundation in, again, some sort of scripting, some sort of low level like C, and then really low level like assembly, it's going to help you transition and understand all of those other languages much easier so that you can follow through with your tasks of reverse engineering or doing the malware analysis. So again, um, those were, when I was looking into it, you know, I didn't want to waste my time learning some obsolete language. I started learning Ruby there for a while, and then I realized that it's really not a standard that most corporations, enterprises, government, like anybody really uses. The, the standard is primarily Python. And that, that's really where you want to go. 
and so wasted my time a little bit on some other languages but finally realized and got my feet set in stone on Python C and assembly and that's that's carried with me since I started learning those I don't regret anything about learning them they've transitioned to other languages seamlessly it helps you understand all of the foundational things that are going on in the background and there's just really no way you can go wrong with them so yeah I hope this helps um, again you know when I was getting started I didn't want to waste my time and I'm sure y'all have a lot of feelings like that as well of well, what language you know which one's the best to learn I don't want to waste my time I don't want to you know buy these unnecessary books or I don't want to practice this unnecessary code those are the three you need to to get familiar with and you can't go wrong so if you have any questions hit us up ring zero labs um, happy coding